Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So in order to understand the concept of impulse transmission, we will talk about some new terms here. So what is impulse transmission? So when I say impulse transmission, I mean the transmission of the electric impulse. So by now what all we studied? We studied how the neuro what happens when the axon gets excited or when the neuron gets excited, how the transmission takes place or the conduction takes place throughout the length of the axon. So now till here it has reached. Now the question is how will it jump from one neuron to another? In order to understand that, we have to understand what is synapse. So it is a junction between the two neurons. So here if you see, these are the two neurons. This is neuron 1 and this is neuron 2. So the junction between these two, that is this junction is known as synapse. So the synapse is formed by a presynaptic neuron and a postsynaptic neuron. So what is pre and postsynaptic neuron? So if this is the junction, the first neuron's end is known as the presynaptic neuron. The second neuron is known as the postsynaptic neuron. So in this case, neuron number one is presynaptic neuron and neuron number two is the postsynaptic neuron. So how is this synapse formed? By the membrane of the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron. So this membrane and this membrane will form the synapse. Now let us look at the structure in. So this is how the structure will look like. Let us suppose if you magnify this portion. This is suppose this is suppose the membrane of the presynaptic neuron, and let us suppose this is the membrane of the postsynaptic neuron. So this junction is the synapse. Right? Now, in some cases, there might be a gap between these two membranes. So it can be like this also. That is, there is a gap between these two membranes. So what is this gap known as? This gap is known as the synaptic cleft. So it is gap between the membranes of pre and post synaptic neuron. So the gap is known as the synaptic cleft. Now there are different types of synapse. So we understood the concept of synaptic cleft. Now another important question that might arise is if there is a gap between the two membranes, how will the impulse jump over that gap? How will the impulse cross that gap? So we have to understand the impulse transmission across that synaptic cleft. That is one important thing that we have to do. Now before that, let us look at the different types of synapse. There are two types of synapse. One is electrical synapse and the other one is chemical synapse. These are the two types of synapse. So what is an electrical synapse? Here the presynaptic neuron and the postsynaptic neuron membranes are very close to each other. So basically it is something like this. This is the presynaptic me membrane and this is the postsynaptic membrane. So you hardly have any gap between the two. Then it is known as electrical synapse. So in this case, impulse can directly flow. I mean here the conduction of impulse will be the way it was happening in case of one particular neuron, right? Because there is no gap. So there is no tension of crossing that gap. So here in a very similar way, the action potential will get shifted from one region to the neighboring region and in a similar fashion, it will get transmitted from one neuron to another. So impulse transmission here would be similar to impulse conduction along a single axon, right? The concept will remain the same. No much difference as such. But if you talk about the chemical synapse, here the presynaptic and the postsynaptic neuron membranes are separated by the synaptic cleft. So there is a gap. So the impulse actually need to cross that gap and that is the challenge. So now we have to understand the process of impulse transmission across the synaptic cleft. So let us spend some time understanding this. Now here again we will pay some attention towards the structures which are present around the synaptic cleft. Now if you talk about the axon terminals, because near the synapse it is the axon 
terminals of one neuron which communicate with the cell body or the dendrite part of the second neuron. So on, in the axon new terminals we have synaptic vesicles and the synaptic vesicles contain the neurotransmitters. We have already discussed all this right. So this is how it would be. So this is the junction. The highlighted portion is the synapse or the junction. So if you actually magnify it, you will see that this is the axon terminal. This is the axon terminal of one neuron. So this swollen part of the axon terminal is often known as the synaptic knob. Inside the synaptic knob, you have vessels like this, which contain the neurotransmitters. So these are the synaptic vesicles and the synaptic vesicles contain the neurotransmitters so these are the neurotransmitters or the chemicals so these are present inside the synaptic vesicles now when the action potential reaches the axon terminal because the action potential is actually being carried throughout the length of the axon. Now when it actually reaches the terminal that is this portion or let us say here this portion. So when it has actually reached here. So what happens when it reaches there? The synaptic vesicles move towards the presynaptic membrane. So these vesicles, they start moving towards the membrane. So this is the final membrane. In fact, you can call this as the presynaptic membrane. So these vesicles will start moving towards the presynaptic membrane. And then the neurotransmitters will be released into the cleft. As soon as the synaptic vesicles touch the presynaptic membrane, the neurotransmitters will be released here. Right? So the neurotransmitters will be released in the synaptic cleft, that is the in the gap area. So what will happen? These neurotransmitters are nothing but chemicals that communicate the information. So these are the chemicals. So now these chemicals will be picked up by their receptors. Now these neurotransmitters will bind to their respective receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. Let us suppose this is the postsynaptic membrane, this black colored structure. So here you have the receptors. So these are the receptors. So these receptors will pick up the neurotransmitters from the synaptic cleft and it will bind to the neurotransmitters. Now this binding will open the ion channels allowing entry of ions which can generate a new potential in the postsynaptic neuron. So the generation of action potential, the process of action potential generation. So normally also in any neuron, how was the action potential generated? It was generated when the uh, neuron was depolarized, right? That is when the neuron was excited then what happened? The voltage gated ion channels opened up and that is how the action potential was generated. So the similar thing will happen in this case also. When these binding will take place, as soon as the binding takes place, the ion channels in this next neuron, in this neuron, the ion channels will open up. So all the positive ions will start entering inside. So the polarity of the initially the resting membrane till now, as long as these uh, binding had not taken place, the neuron 2 was in the resting phase. So resting phase means inside it was negative and outside it was positive. But as long as, but as soon as these receptors bind to these molecules, what happens? The voltage gated ion channels will open and a lot of positive ions will start moving in. As a result, what will happen inside will become positive and outside will become negative. So depolarization will take place and this potential difference would be called as the action potential and then the entire process will repeat. So this action potential will then get transmitted to the neighboring region and so on and that is how it will get transmitted in the next neuron. So now you are trying to understand the concept that how the synaptic cleft is crossed. So the synaptic cleft is basically crossed with the help of the chemicals called neurotransmitters which are present inside the synaptic vesicles. So these synaptic vesicles which you see here they are nothing but they are uh, sac like structures or they are vessel like structures that store chemicals. So these 
Synaptic vesicles are very very important for propagating nerve impulses between neurons and these are continuous and if you see if you look at them these neurotransmitters are constantly secreted by the cell because you need them all the time so they are constantly secreted by the cell so this is how the impulse transmission will take place between various neurons so as i discussed the ion channels will open a new potential will be generated in the post synaptic neuron See, I do understand that this is not a very simple concept. The process of resting membrane potential, then generation of action potential and conduction of action potential. But I have tried my best to explain it to you in the most simple form. So if required, please go back, review the videos, see them once again and get your concepts clear. Please do not move ahead if you have not understood the concept of impulse conduction and transmission property. Right? So I think I, I am clear by now that it, it, these, it are the neurons which are the uh, functional unit of the nervous system. How? Because each neuron gets excited when an, a stimulus comes into picture. Once excited, an action potential is generated and then that action potential gets shifted from one region to another and that is how transmission takes place. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.